So last week we spoke the beginning steps of evangelization. Again, can be a very scary word. We don't understand what evangelization is about. The recognition is that evangelization is just presenting what we have received and sharing the gifts that we have been given by God in his goodness with those around us. The recognition that you know, to be a friend to someone you want for their good. Why would we not want the greatest good, a relationship with Jesus and his church, for our friends? So the plan is simple in at least the steps. The steps, first and foremost, are to befriend someone, to be friends with someone that you know, ultimately you want to be friends with many people, but specifically for evangelization is being friends with someone who's disconnected from the church, who doesn't understand their faith, or maybe isn't Catholic, or is just unchurched. And most of us, I would say, probably have this experience already. Maybe somebody who's left the church, or a family member even. So we know these people in this world that aren't practicing or don't have an understanding of this gift that you have been given, that I have been given, that it has to start with us to share it with them. The gift, our faith, is ultimately from God, but we experience that gift of faith, that gift from God, in other people, in our parents, our grandparents, in our friends, in our family, but just an encounter with somebody who's living out their faith the way they should. To be Catholic is to share by word and action this truth and goodness that God wants for us and for the person that we're friends with. So the first step is to befriend. The second step is prayer. We need to pray ourselves as well as pray for that person that we're asking to be open to God's gift, for them to be docile, for them to be open to the Holy Spirit, and Pray for the strength to be able to say what the Lord is asking of us, to share this gift with them. We need the Lord's help. The next two steps are what we're going to address today specifically, but to invite them and then to journey with them or to accompany them. These things that we're called to do, this faith that we have, this gift that we continue to recognize is such a gift, we have to invite other people to receive it. And then we have to help them unpack it, as we ourselves need to have help unpacking the gift of our faith. It's a lifelong journey, and we're constantly growing in our faith. And to accompany somebody in this journey helps us as well. So this evangelization, though scary in maybe the presentation and how we perceive it, is really just seeking for the good of a friend, seeking for the good of someone that you want to experience the good things that you've received in your relationship with the Lord. So, just to rehash what we talked about last week, befriending someone is sharing our faith. Uh, so first we befriend them, we know them, we maybe work with them, or uh, we do some external activity with them, and we recognize they don't really have a faith with the Lord, or any faith, or maybe they have a faith that they fell away from. Uh, but we share, you know, the good things that we've experienced in our own faith. Why do you come to church? Why do you love this gift the Lord has given you? And why would you not want to share it? So you bear witness to it in word and in deed. The second aspect of that is how we are presenting ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis? How do we present ourselves in our disposition? Are we expressing the joy that the Lord has given us? Are we bearing witness to the joy in our heart on our face? Right? If we have a dour personality or dour outlook on life, we're not going to be the greatest witness of the joy of the gospel. Now, I'm not talking about a false joy. You are sorrowful when it's appropriate to be sorrowful. You're grieving with those who are grieving. But even in the sorrow and the grief that we all experience in life, 
we have an everlasting joy that draws us through, that shows us that this love the Lord has made for us is eternal. And so no matter what happens, God's joy will shine forth in what we do and what we say if we have the right disposition and the mindset to share that with those we encounter. And so this, this is what the first two readings are about. They're about sharing God's goodness, his wisdom and understanding. The first reading personifies wisdom as this woman that's made her house and made food and wine and is open to receive any who come by. Because wisdom, God's goodness, is inviting just by its very nature. We want to understand, we want to know, we want to experience God's love. We're made for it. St. Paul continues to says, be careful how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making most of the opportunity because the days are evil. We are to make use of this opportunity to share God's goodness in the face of a world that shows itself to be evil. Maybe not on the surface. People perceive good things in the world, and the world's not inherently evil. But if we seek the world as our ends, it is evil. Because we're made for more. If we seek the world which is temporary, and we have an eternal longing for a God who knows us, loves us, and desires for our good, we'll never be filled with temporary things, no matter what we have. The rich seek to get richer. The accumulator of goods seeks to accumulate more because they're made for an eternal God. And no matter what you have physically, it doesn't fill the eternal desire for God's love in your heart. So this reality of what we're sharing is what they're made for, what people are made for, what we're made for. We're seeking for the good of others by sharing their joy and love of God's gift that he's given us. And then the third aspect that we talked about yesterday, or last week, we talked about how God strengthens us. And Jesus speaks about it explicitly today in the gospel, the bread of life that's come down from heaven, that gives us life, the Father to the Son, the Son to us, and that life that pours out this ever-flowing torrent of God's love in his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist to strengthen us, to give us the ability to witness to God's goodness, to point to what true love is, that sacrificial gift that Jesus gives us in his gift to the Father for our salvation. It strengthens us, gives us the help that we need so that we can present God's goodness to others. So we befriend and we pray, and really we need to pray throughout the whole experience, right? Because we can't give what we don't have. If we're seeking to befriend somebody without praying, we don't necessarily have the right mindset in entering into a relationship with them. If we're not praying when we're inviting them, we're not seeking to offer the gift that God has given us because we're not receiving the gift ourselves in our lack of prayer. And if we seek to journey with somebody without praying, then where are we going? <laughs> If you're not praying, you don't have a relationship to the Lord. You can't give what you don't have. You can't lead someone to somewhere that you don't know where you're going. And so we need to be in relationship with God in prayer to know where we're going. We're going to Jesus, we're going to his church, we're going to his sacraments. So prayer. Last week, hopefully you have that person in mind already. You befriended already. If you don't, you can still do that, obviously. It's a lifelong process, growing in relationships with other people, as well as the Lord. But hopefully you've already started to pray for that person, that they're open to receive God's gift that he's given you, the goodness that you want to share with them. And so we invite them. This is the, the third step, to invite, befriend, pray, invite. And again, it's that invitation to goodness to grace, to something better, to what they're seeking in the world is useless. It's pointless. I mean, there are good things in the world, don't get me wrong. But if it's our end, it doesn't fulfill us. It doesn't fulfill them. So you're presenting them in this invitation 
to real, true beauty, to relationship with that which they are made for, relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, very practically, we have invitation cards in the bulletin today for you to give out to those people that you've already started to pray for, that you're already friends with, to invite them to what God has done for you. We share all kinds of different things with other people about sports, the Ravens, the Orioles, whatever, golf games and whatever, you know, TV shows and movies. Why would we not share the greatest gift that we were given? The purpose of our life, why would we not share that with those that we call friends? So the invitation is, is simple in the sense that I want this good thing that I've received. I want you to experience it. I want you to, re- to experience a relationship with a God who knows you, loves you, and desires for your good. And so specifically, we're inviting these people who are unchurched and disconnected or have no faith to RCIA or OCIA, which is the Order of Christian Initiation for Adults. And it starts with a few introductory classes, and then it gets into discovering Christ, which is a presentation of who Jesus is and how Jesus loves us and loves them. And then it goes into, you know, the catechism, the teachings of the church, the Bible, what God is doing in the mass and what it means to be Catholic in the sacraments. But it's just a come and see. It's just an experience. You don't, they're not committing to anything. And what's really important about this invitation is you're also accompanying them in it, right? Maybe going to the classes with them, maybe learning more about your own faith, because anybody who goes through RCIA is probably going to pick up something that you didn't know before. Well, I've gone through 12 years of Catholic school. I went to a Catholic college. You still don't know everything. I went through nine and a half years of seminary. I don't know everything. And I still pick up things as I go. It's uh, great having Father Daniel in the rectory, newly ordained, you know, he's fresh out of seminary. I'm like five and a half years out, and it's like he's got this joy in the knowledge and understanding that he's received in the seminary, which I still have, but I have to find it, you know, like it's, it's hard to find sometimes. But yeah, so we're accompanying these people, right? So we're inviting them, but we're saying we're going to walk with you. Ideally, you're able to go with them to these classes, but at least sort of entering into conversation. How's your, you know, classes going? Have you, you know, like, how's your prayer life? How can I support you? You know, how, pray for them, obviously. Continue to pray for them as you're accompanying them, as you invited them, as you befriend them. But, you know, work with them. Grow in relationship with them. You're already friends with them, right? So you have something to talk about. How's OCIA going for you? You know, what's your relationship with the Lord like? Let me tell you what I do with my family, my friends. You know, this is what we do as a family. We go to church. You want to come with us? I know you're not Catholic yet, but you can still start to perceive God's goodness in the Mass and the liturgy of the Word and liturgy of the Eucharist. You can talk about those experiences, how you've grown in your own faith. And at the same time, grow in your own faith, right? This continued journey, the teacher needs to know what they're teaching better than someone who doesn't teach it. If we talk about it, if we share it, we grow in it. We have a lived experience, and we continue to grow in that lived experience the more we share it with other people. The great gift of our faith is that it continues to be unpacked. It continues to grow the more we use it. It's not like we're going to run out. We're talking about an eternal God who is an ever-flowing current of love and mercy and goodness and only grows with the sharing of that gift with others. So again, the plan is simple, at least in the simple steps of the plan. The execution can be a little complicated and difficult, but we befriend, we pray, we invite, and we accompany. Jesus instructs us to do this. He has given us the wisdom and understanding and the strength through the Eucharist, to act. Now is the time to do so. It has to start with someone. It has to start with you.